Okay, so this video is going to be a full overview of my status bar since other people are using it nowadays. Um, I did a video on my status bar, I guess a couple months ago, uh, but this was only when I just started using i3 blocks. Uh, so I've made a lot of changes, made a whole lot of things a whole lot better. Um, so I'm going to give you sort of a full review uh, of all the different modules. Actually, first, before I even start going through that, I'm actually going to make it a little bigger. So I'm going to go to the font. We'll make it, uh, you know, 14 or something like that. Maybe that, uh, yeah, that's mu much better. Um, so I have a couple modules up here. Uh, I'll explain uh, what they are one by one. Actually, let's go ahead and open up the i3 blocks config file. Make that a little bigger. Um, so I, I guess I might as well start, um, well, I'll start from the right edge, just because the stuff that's simpler over, is over there. Uh, so here, this is not part of the i3 uh, status bar. This is actually just the network manager. Um, so I have a date, date, time, stuff like that. That is the time module here uh, that just formats the date and the, the um, setup that I want. Uh, I have a battery module, pretty straightforward. Uh, what this command is actually doing is, um, you know, you have the ACPI, um, command which returns basically battery information that looks like this and I basically just you know grab and awk and said things that, to get you know this kind of format up here I replace you know different text with Unicode characters so instead of saying charging it'll actually have something plugged in like it is here or something like that um, so I have a couple customizations on that but that's pretty much all that is um, so the Wi-Fi and um, iFace uh, modules, I haven't changed at all. These are both just um, uh, parts of i3 blocks. I haven't made any kind of changes. Um, I might in the future, but I just sort of feel like this they suffice. I mean, I, when I use something network related, I'm usually doing it through, uh, you know, the network manager module or whatever, applet, and that's what it's called. Um, now volume, now pretty much all the rest of these uh, I've made myself. Um, so the volume one, I'm going to go ahead and um, go to my scripts folder. Uh, oops, cd into scripts. Um, so the volume module um, is pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, uh, well really there are two possibilities. That is, there's actually volume playing or it's muted and I can mute it with uh, you know, my volume with mod shift M for mute. Um, and of course this automatically changes uh, with that. Um, now, one of the things that I think in the last video I hadn't implemented yet, uh, well, let's actually look at uh, the volume thing here. So the interval at which it updates is once, meaning it only updates right when i3 first loads, and then it never, it doesn't like retest every couple of seconds to see what kind of volume changes you do. Um, instead, what I've implemented is, you know, in case you don't know, actually I should probably open up my uh, audio script thing. Um, I actually have my own sort of audio manager script that um, uh, basically it's a simple, oops, it's a simpler interface for pausing, going forward in music, stuff like that. Um, and the thing about it is what you can do whenever you run one of these commands, um, you can run a pkill command. To, uh, to basically signal to i3 blocks to update. So if I, you know, increase or decrease volume, which you can, you know, see up here, if I increase or decrease volume, um, basically what's happening is i3 blocks isn't updating itself. Instead, this script is running, uh, that is I'm running, you know, uh, up as an option. Um, and it's actually running this new volume command, uh, and it's basically signaling to i3 blocks um, if you notice on the volume module here, the signal uh, is actually 10 for this. So when you signal 10 to i3 blocks, that just says, I need to update the volume module. Uh, so instead, I, I think originally I had it so that instead of this, like i3 blocks was just checking every two seconds for the volume again. Uh, but this is actually technically a lot more efficient because it doesn't check at all. It only checks when you specifically tell it to update. Um, so that. Uh, on the back end of that looks a little bit more complicated because basically I have, you know, these uh, two scripts that sort of play into this. Well, this one isn't really necessary. All you really need is just to have your volume increase command and then put uh, something like this on the end to update uh, i3 blocks. Um, but it's 
way better on system resources because you're not constantly like i3 blocks is not constantly checking to see if five different things need to be updated um, and I've Im implemented a couple changes like that. So that's the volume script, relatively uh, straightforward. Um, I also have a mail script, um, which I think I showed you guys in the last video, but I'll pull it up regardless. And this is specifically supposed to work with my Mutt Wizard, uh, just because the I, you know, in Mutt Wizard basically keeps um, all of your mails offline. So it's simple enough to just run a find command and count how many new mail you have. Uh, and that's what this is here. Um, now, I don't think I mentioned it with the volume thing, but you do have the option of having block buttons, um, where basically if you click on something, it'll it, you can have it open a, a, another program, and that's what I have here. So if I left click on my mail thing, it's gonna bring up my MUT. If I left cl click on the volume thing, it's gonna bring up my volume control, stuff like that. Um, but if I didn't have this, I could just like put this one line as the command instead of having uh, you know, the script referred to there, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. So again, this is, the mail one is pretty simple. It just counts up all the mail that I have, uh, in inbox new. So basically any kind of inbox in my, uh, local repository of mail, um, it counts all of these up. Um, and, oh, and this is just, um, so if I don't have any new mail, um, it, this said command actually just gets rid of the zero. So if no, if I have no new mail, uh, nothing will actually appear here. It, there won't be like a mailbox and a zero because I don't want it taking up time. Now, if you notice this little thing right here, this sort of loading symbol, um, that is, uh, I think this is in here somewhere. Um, yeah, so this thing right here, uh, basically whenever, I, so my mail sync script, whenever it is syncing, it actually puts this little symbol, a Unicode symbol in this file um, and signals to the, the MUT module to update. So what that means for you know a user is that whenever this thing is actually syncing mail, you're gonna see this little loading symbol. Um, and once it's over, it's going to signal again, it's gonna remove that file and then signal to, to um, you know I3 blocks to update again. So as you see now, it's actually disappeared. Um, now I have my mail update every, I think three minutes right now. I'll change that every once in a while, but yeah, so now, um, it's nice because I can see my mail and I can also see when it's downloading or whatever. Um, so weather, this is another command. So a lot of people use this, uh, what is it? Um, WTTR.in. So you can, there's this very nice website. I mentioned it, I think in the last video, but you can, oops, see URL, the main page, and it'll sort of auto detect your approximate location. Uh, so here, well, I'm not really in Milledgeville, but I, I mean, it's in the, in the same state. Um, and it gives you a weather forecast or whatever. Um, so what my, uh, where am I? So what my script here does, what my i3 weather script does is it takes the output of that and it gives you something that looks like this, where you have the low, the high in temperature, and then the precipitation uh, chance. Uh, it actually gives you the highest precipitation chance, like if the precipitation chance is like different for different parts of the day, it gives you the highest one. And this is just what this script does. Um, I, have, I, I have it do it a little clumsily in that like I download it to a particular uh, file and then I have two different commands that run on it just because um, I sort of wanted a one-liner for this, but it was a little difficult. There are a lot of things that are going on. I'm sure it's possible, but uh, I didn't end up doing it. But basically, it auto-detects what's the highest precipitation chance. It gets the lowest temperature and reports that as your low for today, and your highest temperature and reports that as the high for today. And this updates, uh, this actually does update on a timer. Uh, so every 3,600 seconds uh, is when it updates, or whenever you refresh i3 uh, or something like that. Uh, but that's that. Um, now one module I don't have active, I'm still sort of playing around with, is uh, a torrents module. Let me actually turn this on for the purpose of the video. Um, so you'll see, so this is for like transmission, uh, if you use transmission daemon or whatever. Um, and I'm sort of still deciding what the interface for this should look like, but basically what it does is um, it has, it gives you three symbols. The hourglass is for something that's uh, doesn't have it's not downloading basically it's idle uh, the down sign is for downloading and the um, the little seedling is actually for uh, finished downloads that you're seeding or something like that 
Um, it's it's a relatively clumsy script. I'll bring it up now. Um, and I, I literally actually just wrote it today because I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have that. Um, but I don't actually have it active on my machine. Um, so it's a little clumsy. It's just a one-liner with some said and awking. Um, but it, it does basically what you need it to do. And if you click on it, it'll actually bring up um, i3 or i3 uh, transmission remote or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to uncomment or recomment that because I don't necessarily need it. Um, it, of course, will be going with LARBs and all that stuff. It's just I don't have it activated by default. Um, so another nice little thing I added is uh, I keep closing out my scripts folder, but um, another nice little thing I have is basically a Pac-Man. Um, uh, basically, it tells you whenever you need to install updates or whatever. So right, th this thing here means there are three updates that I can install. Uh, I can click on it to run a Pac-Man command and do it automatically. Um, but basically what this just does, right, is um, if you... Well, I should give the context to this. So I'm the kind of person I have... Pac-Man uh, check for downloads or check for new updates and actually download those updates in the background. You don't actually have to have them, you know, check for actually download them to have this work. But if you're the kind of person who has a cron job who just uh, who likes to update your repositories every once in a while, uh, basically what this does is uh, it runs literally uh, Pac-Man QU. Uh, which just gives you a list of all the programs that, you know, you can immediately update. It just counts those up, stuff like that, so three programs. Um, and it puts it in this file. And the module, it, uh, this file here, pack upgrade. And the module just actually reads what's in that file if it exists uh, and puts it in i3 blocks. So you know exactly, uh, you know, how many programs you want to install. Uh, and actually, I might as well just, you know, go ahead and install this. Click on that, and it'll actually run um, the actual update command. Uh, and I will let it do that. As again, as, as I said, I actually have everything download in the background, so I don't even have to think of that. So updating is just that easy on my machine. Um, but you can have a different setup uh, if you... Um, well, actually, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about cron jobs later. I was meaning to do a video on that, so I'll show you what I have. But um, anyway, so... It, uh, aside from that, I just have two more, and that is here I have uh, an MPD uh, module, and here is a recording module. So the MPD model, module, um, if I open that up, it's relatively simple. I think I got this from someone else, but I've made significant changes to it now. So you'll see there is a, an artist name and a song name here. Um, it is italicized and sort of grayed out because it's not active, it's not playing. If I unpause it, why isn't it making so? Oh, it's just very silent right now. If I unpause it, it's going to like, you know, no longer be italicized or grayed out. Um, that's just because I think the original module I got, got just replaced it with like paused. And you couldn't actually see what was paused uh, if you unpause it. Um, but I just changed it around a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about i3 blocks is you can actually use like Pango formatting. So you can get stuff like, um, you know, italics and stuff like this. Um, so basically all this command, I mean, this command is really just a, an, an advanced, like, um, again, it's more setting and awking. It's mostly just a one-liner to get the formatting because uh, MPC, if you just run it, uh, it gives you this formatting here uh, with all these different lines. And so this, like, shell command basically just puts it in the right order, puts it in Pango syntax, depending on if it's paused or not. Uh, so, yeah, that's nice. And the last thing I have, which... Uh, I guess it's nice for me, I just implemented it, so you probably haven't noticed on other videos, but uh, this little thing here, which is uh, basically a recording uh, notification. Uh, I could probably, actually I don't have an, a separate script for this, uh, but I'll, I'll put it this way. So I have recording scripts, so the one I'm running right now to record this video is my screencast command, um, which if you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen, I mean it's really just a, a straightforward FFmpeg. FFmpeg script that uh, records my video, uh, but I just added this other little thing where it just echoes a recording symbol uh, to this location, and then it tells i3 blocks to update whenever it runs. And so the i3 blocks, uh, the i3 block command for recording basically checks to see if this file actually exists, and of course this script adds this little recording icon to it. Um, and it basically just puts it here. So whenever I'm recording, I now have this nice little uh, recording script. 
And I also have a special script for actually killing my recordings. Of course, all of this stuff is mapped in i3. I don't run these scripts manually. Um, I run them with keyboard shortcuts. Um, but I have another kill recording script, uh, which makes sure the recording is killed. Uh, I've noticed sometimes, or I used to just like kill all FFmpeg, which can be dangerous because if I'm like compiling something, or you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, compiling a video or something in FFmpeg um, while I'm recording and I kill the recording with kill all FFmpeg, obviously all the FFmpeg in instances are going to close. So I made it a little better here. I made it specifically kill uh, my screencasting or audio video commands. These are specific scripts that I have. Um, so it kills those, and then it echoes nothing into this recording um, uh, file or whatever. Basically just erasing whatever's there. So when I kill this recording, it's going to get rid of the little file that it made when it started the recording, and then it's going to update i3 blocks. So once I finish this recording and quit, um, this little thing is actually going to disappear, and that'll tell me that the recording's over. Um, so it's pretty nice just to have a little visual notification of all that. Um, so anyway, that is basically all of, um, uh, I guess, all of the i3 blocks config. Again, I've thrown a bunch of other stuff in, uh, bells and whistles and stuff like this. Um, all of these should be on my dot files. Uh, again, most of these files are going, if you go to my scripts folder, uh, I pretty much appended i3 to all of these just because, you know, they're different. Uh, some of these are different, like i3 resizes something different. Um, oh, and what, one more thing I should say, I, um, I only say it because I noticed that this was here. Um, I originally had some trouble with MPD, uh, yeah, the MPD script, just because um, it was a pain having to always signal uh, whenever I, you know, unpause or go to the next song or something like that, um, when exactly this, you know, MP, MPD should update, or, or excuse me, the, the i3 block should update its MP3 command or whatever. Um, and so I made this little, uh, someone pointed out to me, I forget who, you can say if you were the guy in the comments, but um, uh, someone pointed out to me that MPC has this nice little idle command where basically um, you can have it so that it runs something every time that there's a change in MPC. So this is how I actually, I have this little script running in the background whenever I start uh, i3. And then whenever I uh, there's some kind of change in MPC, it actually uh, manually updates the, it signals 11 to I3 blocks. And of course, 11 is the signal to update uh, MPD. Um, so that's basically it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you want to check these out again, you can go through my scripts folder. And uh, the, usually the ones starting in I3 are the ones that are important. Um, but this, again, is for partially for people who are using LARBs, just so you know how to configure all this. So all of it is relatively easy to configure. If you have any questions, ask me about it. Um, or ideas, I guess. Any extra modules to add. Just because, you know, I like throwing other stuff in, even though, you know, who actually needs all this? <laughs> um, so that's about it. Uh, see you guys next time. Uh, ask me if you have any questions.